The following is a Hoop Bowl presentation. Hello, welcome to the Box Score Breakdown Show, a Hoop Ball presentation. My name is Adrian Benjamins, and I'm joined by Neil Rochelani. And this episode is brought to you by the Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee Company. You guys, get some delicious coffee, taste the Kona difference, head over to hawaiianisles.com. You can also find their delicious coffee on Amazon. Neil, how are you, man? Doing all right. Feeling better. I feel like I slept, nice. I slept well. Feeling good. A little chilly here in the city, but uh, surviving. How are you? Doing pretty good. Uh you know, it's, it's getting pretty cold here in Southern California as well, as well. Nowhere near what you're feeling over there, I'm sure. But we're in the middle of like a four-day rainstorm. You know, it doesn't rain very much here. So uh, it's like a different vibe than we're used to. Yeah, rain. How, 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 what's, <laughs> what's, what's the temperature like? Tell, tell, tell me what the temperature is. And then I'll, I'll, all right, all right. I'll tell I'm you if I feel for the- you. Go ahead. I'm pulling up the weather app. Yeah. It is fifty. It is fifty-four degrees wow. where I am in Long Beach right now. There's rain scheduled for the next three days till Thursday. Brutal. How does that compare to your snow uh, and your coldness over there? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 you know, I'm not a fan of the rain either. So I, I actually prefer snow over rain, but uh, especially if it's like raining like several days in a row, that's really frustrating. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm not gonna. I'm telling you, anytime you want to, uh, you want to uh, take my place, and I come out to California, I'll do it. So that's Man, that's still open until Thursday. So my, you know, I was just thinking today, my kids have never even seen snow. So I actually been thinking, when's the next time I should take them up to the mountains so that they can uh, they can experience some snow for the first time. So yeah, man, I'll have to take you up on that offer. Man. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for. Um, <laughs> All right, let's move on to some basketball. Four games, All right. four games completed. Uh, unless there's anything else you want to talk about. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't mean to cut nope. you off like that. I just thought. Let's talk hoops, man. <sighs> I feel like uh, compared to what we've been used to, uh, this is somewhat of a light slate tonight. Still got uh, quite a few nice games to talk about, though. Yep. So uh, should we jump right into it? I think it might be your turn. I Lead think us. it is. Uh, Houston, Memphis. And this is where also the big news is. Clint Capella out um four to six weeks is the last thing i saw and that kind of came out of nowhere from my expectation i did not know he was that injured or would see that sort of looks like um it's a right thumb estimated return i'm looking at the 21st of february oh gosh chris paul is still out eric gordon still out um and this team won harden had 36 points at halftime Finished with 57. Uh, let me run through the box score. Talk about who played there. Harden, 57 points on 17 of 33 shots. 6 of 15 from the three-point marker. 17 of 18 from the free throw line. Yowzers. Nine rebounds, two assists. Six three-pointers, two steals, a block, five turnovers. All right, so who else scored? We've got Daniel House uh, was next with 15 points on 6 of 12 shooting, four rebounds, one assist, three three pointers, and a steal. PJ Tucker can only muster up five points in 31 minutes here. Four rebounds, five assists, one of six shooting, two of two from the free throw line, a three and three steals. Uh, Nene, he's the one who was starting for. Uh, Capella, but uh, he can't really go that long. Tonight, he played just 14 minutes. Um, two points on one of one shooting, three rebounds, not much to talk about. No blocks tonight from him or steals. Austin Rivers played 39 minutes, had 11 points, six assists on four of 12 shooting, no rebounds, two three pointers, three steals, one of two from the free throw line. Off the bench, um, Joel Green played 30 minutes, so. He might be your candidate for a lot of minutes. They're going to go small. Uh, Green can spread the floor and put up points. Uh, Tonight, 14 points on 5 of 13 shooting, 6 rebounds, 
two assists, four three-pointers, a steal, and a block. Gary Clark plays 26 minutes, not much in the fantasy line. Same with Jen en- excuse me, James Ennis, the third, with 16 minutes. I, I think – I don't actually think it's going to be Nene who's going to get the uptick. I think it's going to be Gerald Green. And, um, you know, they, they went up a pretty against a pretty big team tonight in Memphis, Gasol, Jaron Jackson Jr., Jermichael Green. Um, and they went small and they won. I think um, – I don't know if I want to own Green, but if I had to stream him in points leagues, I would do it. Um, I think he's going to be serviceable in that format. It's his percentages that kind of scare me. 42%, a 41.5% shooting. And if he starts taking 15 shots a game, it could get ugly some game. So I think the points will be there. He'll rebound decently, uh, pass the ball okay, a defensive stat or two. Um, what, what's your thought on uh, Houston? Man, personally, this one hits me kind of hard, Neil. I have oh, Capella no. and a, I have Capella in a couple leagues. One of them, my main um, home league that I was scratching to get back into it. You know, at the beginning of the season, I started um, in like last place. I was down at the bottom. Started working my way up towards the middle of the table. Uh, my team started coming around. This one's a big blow for me, Neil. This likely. Uh, wipes out any shot for me to uh three peat in that league which was uh likely not going to happen anyways but the, it just kind of solidifies that i'm kind of out of the race to win that league and so a uh, huge blow for me man i it was uh i got a little depressed when i read this morning that capella was going to miss uh so much time so that was a huge bummer but um Okay, so you know I, you know it's funny you automatically think okay nene is going to get the start He can't play more than 16, 15 minutes a game. He's just older now, can't stay healthy. Some people wondered, hey, could Marquise Chris step up into this front court? He got seven minutes tonight. He hasn't done anything for the last two years. We can't trust him. I like your take on Green, especially with uh, Eric Gordon out, Chris Paul out. They need scoring. Gerald Green's going to step in. Look what he did tonight, man. Played 30 minutes, took 13 shots, and scored 14 points with a full line here. I think, he, as you said, Neil, he's definitely worth streaming. Um, I like Austin Rivers. Had a bad game tonight. Only shot 4 at 12, but, man, saw almost 40 minutes tonight. So, um, And then, Neil, look for this team to make a move. I think they're definitely going to add – a big, um, I can't think off the top of my head who would be a good ad, but look for this team to make some kind of move. Look for them to make some kind of a signing, um, some kind of a front court player here. That's all I got. Any closing thoughts here? Yeah, I think you're right about that move. I mean, uh, Maury over at Houston's always looking to make moves at the trade deadline, and they're not going to be able to, to uh, compete without some more depth um, in general, and definitely a, they need a big man. In case this happens during the playoffs, um, yeah. So uh, I like I like that thought. You know, there's uh, there's rumors that uh, Robin Lopez might be on the move here in Chicago. So hey, maybe See, they, maybe he, they get him. He would be perfect, man. Someone like Robin Lopez. Um, he would be absolutely perfect. Uh, you know, just a bummer from a reality standpoint too, Neil. They were playing so good, and Capella was having a career year. Just had a 30-point game. I think last week had a career-high 30-point game. He's been monstrous all season, and they've been playing pretty good despite all the injuries they've had. So big blow for the Rockets, but... Um, I don't know. Let's see how it goes, man. All right. I'm going to look over at the other side of this game, the Grizzlies. And, um, man, uh, let me start with Mike Conley. 14 points, 7 assists, a steal, 1-3, 5-10 shooting on 3-3 of from the line. Garrett Temple, hello. Nice to see him uh, step up here. 14 points, 3 assists, 3 rebounds. Uh, five of seven from the field, four of six from three-point range. You know, Anil, I should have started before getting into this. Kyle Anderson has also been ruled out, which, by the way, Neil, that um, home league team I was talking about, I also got Kyle Anderson on that team. So big blow to my team uh, the past few days. And uh, so, hey, look, I kind of – 
I want to say, I want to keep an eye on Garrett Temple, Neil, but he has been uh, doing nothing for so long that I'm just going to completely ignore this nice line tonight. He would need to do this for like three or four games in a row for him to get onto my radar. And so I'm just going to ignore Garrett Temple, but a pretty nice game from him. Jaron Jackson Jr., let's see if maybe he can step up with some more usage. 12 points tonight, three blocks and assists, six rebounds, five of 11 from the field, two of three from the line. Uh, Mark Gasol with a big letdown here. In uh, 25 minutes, he only took five shots, made two of them for five points, had seven turnovers tonight, which is not like him. So uh, this is very disappointing game from him. Four assists, seven rebounds, no threes, one of four from the line. Uh, Carter got the start, only played 15 minutes for eight points, two assists, a rebound. Off the bench, they got some nice production from Caspi, who had 12 points in uh, 25 minutes. He also had uh, two threes. Uh, Mack had 10 points, seven assists, three rebounds in 23 minutes. Jamichael Green had nine points, one steal, three assists, four boards, one three in 22 minutes. Not too much else to talk about, man. As I said, uh, Kyle Anderson's out. Chandler Parsons, I doubt we even see him again. Uh, what do you think of the Memphis Grizzlies? You know, I was really surprised to see um, Justin Holiday not starting here. I thought he would jump right in and get his chance. They started with Javon Carter in the backcourt. He just played 15 minutes, had some foul trouble. Um, maybe not so impressive either. And then um, Holiday comes in for 14 minutes. I have no idea why they traded for this guy. Um, it's baffling. He had one point on uh, three attempts. Missed them all. Had a free throw. I am... Um, I dropped him last night. I uh, just took a risk uh, on Alec Burks. See how that turns out. Um, something just told me this was not going to work out with Holiday, at least not anytime soon, and it's looking to be that case. So I think he's droppable in all leagues. Um, did you mention that? I'm sorry if you talked about Justin Holiday. No, I'm actually glad that you mentioned him. I completely forgot because his line was so poor tonight. Yeah, Neil, you're absolutely right. I mean, you would think automatic if Kyle Anderson's out, Justin Holiday can just slide right in there and uh, be a nice fit to uh, replace him. We know Justin Holiday can score the ball. They need some scoring out on the perimeter. It just makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you have to drop him, there's some nice pickups right now. I can't blame you, but man, part of me still wants to just wait a few more games. He needs to crack this starting lineup or see starter type minutes in the next game or so. But uh, I agree with you, though. If he if this is the role that he's going to get for the rest of the year off the bench in just 14, 15 minutes, he will not be worth owning. I'm just hoping uh, maybe they're still working him into this. Uh, you know, learning the playbook. Uh, maybe they're just kind of working them in slowly. I don't know. I'm just trying to be optimistic, Neil. I don't know, man. Yeah, whenever uh, a guy's on my team, I tend to go pessimistic. <laughs> it's not working out. So maybe that's why I dropped him. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if it happens. Um, going on to the second game tonight, Charlotte 108, San Antonio 93. Start off with... The surprising winners, from my perspective, the Hornets. Um, great games all around here. Kemba Walker, 37 minutes, 33 points, four rebounds, five assists on 13 and 27 shooting. Did not take a free throw. Went seven for 13 from three-point land, two steals and a turnover. Jeremy Lamb had a solid game. Nice to see him um, playing well. 19 minutes, especially since I own him everywhere. Seven rebounds, two assists, eight of 15 shooting. Two of two from the free throw line, a three-pointer, a steal, a block. Two turnovers, uh, Biombo starting at center here with the injured Zeller for another um, couple weeks. Maybe probably more than that, probably another three weeks. Um, nine points, six rebounds, one assist, two of four from the field, five of seven from the free throw line. It's good for Biombo, a steal, a block. Uh, Marvin Williams in 27 minutes goes for 11 points, five rebounds, three assists, three of six shooting. Did have a decent line there with three three pointers, two of two from the free throw line, and a steal. Batum, very quiet night. Kind of what he's been doing all season. Thirty minutes, seven points, three rebounds, one assist on three of six shooting, two steals, a block, a three pointer. 
Uh, off the bench, Gilchrist gets 25 minutes, goes for 3-7-1, and one, so not much there. Miles Bridges, 19 minutes, 8-6-1, uh, with no defensive stats and no three-pointers. Tony Parker in a uh, return matchup to San Antonio. Gets 19 minutes, 8-3-4, and 4-12 and four, shooting. Um, kind of a pedestrian light. Hernan Gomez, only 14 minutes, so... Any streamer options for him have kind of gone by the wayside with Zeller out. I am not uh, sure I want anyone on this team besides Walker, Lamb, maybe Marv. Um, and then I, I, you know, Zeller is someone who might fit my profile in my Rotor League. I might I might stash him here in a couple of weeks before he comes back, but I don't think anyone's going to reach to grab him. So um, that's that's really nothing really new here from Charlotte except, this is a nice win. That's about it. How about you? Yeah, I like your take on Zeller, man. Uh, I'm in a league where I kind of need uh, like a center. He kind of fits that mold of what I'm looking for. I think he's estimated to return like the beginning of February. So we still got a couple weeks. So I just kind of got my eye on him where, you know, that that week before he's scheduled to return, I might try to pick him up then. So I kind of like that take. And I also agree with your thoughts on, man, really the only guys you want to own are Kemba and uh, Jeremy Lamb. Nicholas Batum plays good here and there, but uh, a lot of lines like we saw tonight, very low-end, kind of disappointing line. Marvin Williams has actually been playing well tonight. Uh, We didn't see it tonight, but he has actually been playing pretty well. All right, uh, going to check out the San Antonio side, and uh, I'll start with LaMarcus Aldridge, 28 points. 10 rebounds, 4 assists, a steal, a block, uh, shot a very efficient 11 of 17 from the field, 6 of 6 from the line. Great game from him. DeMar DeRozan with 14 points, 5 assists, 5 rebounds, 1 steal, 7 of 15 from the field. He did have 6 turnovers, which hurts a bit. Uh, Forbes was a pretty disappointing line. Played 37 minutes and sh- took 12 shots, but only made 3 of them for 7 points. Two steals, one assist, six boards. Um, And uh, Derek White has been playing really well lately. And um, this is a great game from him. 18 points, seven assists, four rebounds, two threes, seven to 12 from the field, two or three from the line. Uh, Pau Gasol got the start here. Is happy to see that, but still saw limited minutes. Only played 11 minutes for two points, a block, an assist. Three rebounds. We're not owning him anywhere. Off the bench, Patty Mills with 14 points um, and two threes. Uh, Bertons had eight points. Not a lot to talk about. Jakob Pertl, that doesn't look like that's going to happen at all. We're waiting for the return of Rudy Gay. Neil, what do you think about the Spurs? Yeah, I... The Yaka Portal thing, definitely never going to happen. Um, but the Derek White thing has happened. Uh, really impressive if you jumped on him. I'm a little, I was really cautious about him. One, because he was not even supposed to be the starter coming this year. Only got that because of the injury to the guy I'm now forgetting, um, which was DeJounte Murray. Oh, man, that was – I feel like a eon ago. Anyway, um, Derek White has definitely proved himself. He is very good out there. Gets the defensive stats as well as the uh, point guard stats. And um, – I was curious to see my. I'm watching Paul Gasol. Um, he's he's kind of a Cody Zeller like guy. Um, don't expect much, but he can usually do enough to kind of get by for low end center value if I need something one like that. But um, clearly, he's not there yet. Just 11 minutes tonight. Um, don't expect him to get there, but I'm going to watch him just just in case. Um, not much else there on the Spurs. Let's go to uh, game three, which I've got is Boston at um, Brooklyn. The uh, Boston side, they were resting a couple guys tonight. Irving rested. Uh, I don't think it's anything serious. Same with Marcus Smart. Uh, Both were questionable. Um, Did not play, so they went with Rozier at guard. They actually got blown out here. I mean, the final score is 109-102, but it was way more one side than this at one point. Uh, Let's start with Jason Tatum, who had the line of the night for the Celtics. 34 points. Five rebounds, three assists on 12 and 19 shooting. Seven of 11 from from free throw. 
Uh, three three-pointers, a steal, and three blocks. Marcus Morris, very quiet in 24 minutes, 8 points, 6 rebounds, 3 of 11 shooting. No assists, a three-pointer, no defensive stats. Al Horford also very quiet, 20 minutes, just 8, 2, and 4 on 3 of 5 shooting, 2 of 2 from the free throw line. No steals, no blocks. Um, Jalen Brown starting, had a solid night with scoring, 9 of 18 shooting, 22 points, 6 rebounds, no assists. Two of three from the free throw line, two steal, excuse me, two steals and two three pointers and a block. Rozier uh, struggled in the starting role, three of twelve shooting, seven points, three rebounds, five assists. Um, my other stats have blanked out. Um, sorry, Adrian. I, <laughs> do you, do you, I use my phone to check. Oh my god, this is so fr- sorry. Uh, That's okay. Uh, a steal and a three pointer. Brad Wanamaker. I haven't said his name much this year. Played 26 minutes, 13, 3, and 4 on 4 of 11 shooting. Three three-pointers, two steals. So a nice night there if you could have foresaw that. Uh, Gordon Hayward, even I thought he might have a you know, pretty active night with the light um, rotation here in Boston. But he only played 25 minutes, 3-5-1, three, three, and one, three points on 1 of 6 shooting. He has just not looked all that great this year. A three-pointer, no steals, no blocks. Daniel Tice, I believe it is, 18 minutes, 5-4-2. and two. Gabrielle Yabusele, uh, 13 minutes. Semi Ojale, 11. Robert Williams, 10. Yeah, just kind of a flat game from Boston. I don't know if you saw this, but I was kind of tracking the score, and, and Brooklyn was way ahead in the third quarter. Made it made it competitive with the second unit. In the fourth, uh, Marcus Morris won disappointment tonight. I thought he would bust out. He's been playing very well uh, with, the, uh, with the regular starting five. Tonight he had more of a predominant role, did not work out. Uh, Tatum had his game, but like you said at the beginning of the season, it's going to be a different guy, a different night, and tonight was Tatum's night. Um, everyone else was a disappointment. Any thoughts on Boston? Uh, nothing new for me here, man. It's just um, It was real nice to see Tatum and Brown have a nice game, kind of reminiscent of last season when those two were kind of leading the charge and was nice to see, but this team, man, uh, this team's really toughed tough to predict and uh with Morris just really being uh really really underwhelming tonight Horford as well Gordon Hayward it's really tough to trust these guys man so really uh they've been a a really strange team for fantasy on the disappointing side for me all right gonna jump over to the other side of this game the Brooklyn Nets and it was a D'Angelo Russell he was leading the way 34 points A steal, a block, seven assists to go along with five boards. Shot seven of 13 from downtown. 13 of 26 from the field. One of two from the line. Did have five turnovers tonight, but a pretty nice game regardless. Joe Harris, uh, this is what I like to see from him, man. 13 points, a steal, three assists, eight rebounds, one three. 4-10 Four of ten from the field, four of four from the line. I feel like Harris should be pretty solid uh, going forward, or at least in the short term, with Crab out and Hollis Jefferson out, and um, all these injuries that the Nets have. Uh, Jared Allen this is an outstanding game from him. Had a nice double double, nineteen points, twelve boards to go along with four blocks. This is pretty much. Uh, uh, when you get a line like this from Jared Allen, you're you're very happy. She also helped you at the free throw line, shooting nine of ten from the line, five of nine from the field. Great game from him. Um, Karooks, nineteen <laughs> points, two steals, and assists, four rebounds, two threes. Uh, you know, a couple weeks ago he did this. I picked him up, and then he didn't do anything after. So uh, I'd like to say that you know he could be worth an ad, but I don't really trust him. He would need to do this consistently for a few games for me to make a move on him. Uh, Graham got the start in 27 minutes, but didn't really do much. Had zero points. Off the bench, they got some production from uh, Damari Carroll, who had a double-double, 10 points and 14 rebounds. He also had a 3 in 33 minutes. Uh, Dinwiddie, man, he's kind of fallen off lately, I feel like. Uh, kind of low-end line from him tonight with 8 points, 2 assists, a rebound, a block, 2 threes in 28 minutes. 
not too much else to talk about. Neil, this this team's missing a lot of players, man. What do you think of the Brooklyn Nets? Yeah, this is a uh... This is another team which tends to get a lot of different players because of usage. I, I'm surprised. Dinwiddie's kind of fallen off. Um, that's the one thing that kind of jumps out to me. Uh, just eight points, just two assists. You know, this guy I thought was an integral part of their team, um, and he still is, but uh, not doing much in the stat set. The other thing that um, Russell keeps impre- keeps on impressing me um, uh, tonight, another great night. You know, he shot 50% from the field. Um and uh, helped us allow the team in scoring again. Jared Allen, uh, he's the one guy I got right in fantasy DFS tonight. So happy about that. And then uh, Rodian and Karuks, um, yeah, I don't trust him. He's going to have games like this, but I think he's also going to have some duds as well. So I, um, I'm not going to pick him up. But uh, yeah, that's it. Um, should we go on to the next game? Yep. All right. Uh, the last one, I think, before I lose you here, Detroit, Utah. Finished up a little bit ago. Um, Detroit falls 94 to 100, led by uh, Griffin, Blake Griffin, 36 minutes, 19 points, four rebounds, four assists on seven to 17 shooting, two of two from the free throw line, three three pointers, a steal, a block, four turnovers. Andre Drummond, uh, double doubles with 15 points, 13 rebounds, one assist on six to 17 shooting, three of four from the free throw line, three steals, no blocks. No turnovers. Reggie Bullock, uh, 27 minutes, 13, two and one, uh, four of six from the field, three of three from the free throw line, two, three pointers, two steals. Um, Bruce Brown jr. Uh, very quiet night in 14 minutes. Although he started, um, five points, three rebounds, one assist, um, and a turnover. Not much there. Reggie Jackson, um, Played 29 minutes, 11 points, three rebounds, four assists on five of 15 shooting. Struggled there. 0 of 5 from three point land, two steals, no no blocks, no turnovers. Off the bench, Kennard plays 23 minutes. Um, this guy always teases me. Uh, tw- 10 points, five rebounds, no assists, four or five shooting, two three pointers. Fortunately, it was not enough to get me to watch him just yet. Galloway, 21 minutes. Ish Smith, 19. John Lohr, 13. Stanley Johnson, 12. Excuse me. Um, not much here. You know, I'm still watching these wings. Bullock is the guy I'm most bullish on, and uh, he continues to probably have the best line, but still not good enough to add. We'll see down the stretch if I need to stream three pointers. He might be one of my options. Uh, I don't think anyone's picking him up anywhere, so you could probably watch him. Uh, currently, still 161. But um, that's it. This team is really boring all around. I hate. <laughs> yeah. I hate to say it, but it's just. They don't only really play that pretty basketball, and they're kind of on the cusp in the East of making the playoffs, which is pretty bad by that standard. And uh, fantasy wise, just two guys, and the rest are kind of just not great for fantasy. Try to make Bullock happen. What do you think? What do you think of these uh, Pistons? You hit the nail on the head when you said boring, man. This <laughs> team is. But no, that I you feel were bad right. for saying that. that. Was, yeah. That was hey, I I apologize to any Detroit Piston fans. I'm not I they're a good team, but from a fantasy standpoint, there's just like uh you know, Blake Griffin and Andre Drummond and then after that, you got a huge drop off. It's really hard to trust any guys on the wing. As you said, Reggie Bullock has games like tonight. Tomorrow it could be Langston Galloway or Luke Kennard or um you know, so it's it's really tough for me to to trust any of these guys and um, you know last season was it last season or the season before that Charlotte Hornets had the uh, most boring team where like it was kind of a similar vibe to this where there were just one or two guys that you trusted and like everyone else you didn't trust and then there's just no storyline to the team you know what I mean so. Uh, Neil, it's funny when I'm looking at my league pass lineup to see, Hey, what game am I going to watch? I hardly ever look to watch Detroit Pistons game because of, uh, it's, it's just a little boring, man. (laughs) Anyways, uh, I'm going to jump in on the other side of this game. The Utah jazz going to start with, uh, Donovan Mitchell, who had 28 points 
Shooting is not great, which is an Achilles heel for him. Nine of 21. He also had four turnovers, which is also an issue. So not the greatest game, but did have 28 points and two steals, two assists, which I'd love to see him uh, facilitate more and get larger assist numbers here. But uh, also five rebounds. Did have three threes tonight and shot seven of nine from the line. Rudy Gobert with a massive double-double. 18 points to go along with 25 rebounds, two blocks, three assists, shot a nice six of nine from the field, six of eight from the line. Joe Ingles, man, this is more like it. Uh, if 13 points to go along with eight assists, four rebounds, two threes, three of 10 from the field, a five of six from the line. Let's hope he can build on this performance and get going. Um, O'Neal got the start, but did not do much. Zero points in 27 minutes. We don't trust him. I hope you don't have him rostered in any of your leagues. Derek favors 10 points with eight rebounds and assists and a steal in 24 minutes. Uh, off the bench, they got a nice game from Kyle Korver who had 19 points and assists, two rebounds, five threes tonight, five of 14 from the field, four of four from the line. Good luck if you can uh, figure out when he's going to do this again. Uh, Jay Crowder with two points in 28 minutes. Man, he has really fallen off. You know, there was a time earlier this season, Neil, where I thought Jay Crowder could uh, be a solid low-end type guy. And even in a roll off the bench, but it is it's definitely not happening for him. We don't really trust anyone else on this team. And uh, Rubio is out right now. Dante Exum is out. Um, I, even Neto, who uh, I thought I could pick up in a really deep league, he's even out right now. So uh, really tough to uh, pick up any of these guys in the backcourt. We don't trust them. Neil, how do you feel about the Utah Jazz? Uh, I'm impressed. They keep, you know, they're getting wins here. They're really utilizing Corver off the bench to get some scoring. Um, I think he might. He's he's had some couple good games um, recently. Maybe if you need to stream threes, he's another option. Won't do much else. But yeah, I'm just impressed by this team. All three of their point guards are not playing. They're going with Royce, Royce O'Neal um, as a, as their fifth starter. Not really a point guard at all, but uh, he's he's starting there for them with Mitchell taking over the responsibilities. And it's um, they keep winning. I'm just impressed by that. And Gobert is a monster, so nothing new there. Um, yeah, I, I thought there might be someone more someone more interesting to stream with the uh, point guard absence, but it looks like it's just Corver from my perspective. No one else is really doing much of anything else. Um, yeah, that, go ahead. Yeah, that might be a great take on Corver, man. With them starting uh, the backcourt of O'Neal and Donovan Mitchell, they're bringing Corver off the bench as that like six-man role. This could be a great role for him. And, uh, it, you know, it, I uh, didn't realize that he had been playing well even before this game. So, yeah, maybe – in. He's the guy to pick up here. Uh, yeah, four threes tonight, two last game, three the game before. Um, you know, he has the ability to knock down. They, they love to spread the floor and shoot threes. Everyone there tends to does except for Gobert. And they're going to let him have the green light, I believe, like you said, when he comes off off the bench and rely on him to score. So um, when I saw the game the other day, as soon as he touched the ball, he just threw it right up. He had no hesitation. So he's got the green light. Uh, we'll see if he can deliver. But uh, other than that, um, Nothing else jumps out to me. And I think you're off the hook. I think you can go and, and um, drink some Hawaiian Isles Kona coffee because you're going to be up all night with your kids. Are they still sick? Is anyone yeah, still sick over both, there? Both my kids are sick right now. Uh, yeah. My my two-year-old daughter came down with a fever today. It was oh, no. my son over the weekend who was sick and, and my wife. Now my daughter caught. I don't know how I haven't gotten sick, Neil. Everyone around me is getting sick. I have somehow dodged it. I feel like uh, Neo in the Matrix, like <laughs> dodging the flu, man. It's, it's crazy. But uh, uh, yeah, I'm, you're right, man. I should uh, load up on some coffee because it's probably going to be a long night for me. But hey, guys, thanks for listening, supporting the show. Uh, hit us up on Twitter. We're getting some great questions. Actually, maybe in the next show, we, we got a good question um, on Twitter. Oh, so yeah. Let's we'll... uh, let's talk about I'm sorry. I totally forgot. I responded to the let's gentleman. Let's pull it up right now. Yeah, before. Yeah. Uh, now it's kind of a short night. This would be great. Love to talk about these. Um, um, all right. I'm pulling it up right now. Uh, right. So 
fantastic question. We we always appreciate when you guys reach out to us. Um, Hector on Twitter asked, so he's got an open IR spot. He's looking to pick up Eric Gordon, Larry Nance, Jonas Valanciunas, or Karis Levert. He would need to drop uh, Josh Hart, Kevin Huerter, or Alec Burks to be able to pick up one of these guys. Neil, what would you do if you were him? Who would you drop? Who would you pick up? Yeah, I would drop Josh Hart. I wouldn't even think twice about that one. Um, picking up, I won't, I responded with Valanchunas. Um, somehow I I missed Levert here. And I, I'm still, I know Levert is scheduled to be back um, sometime this month. And obviously if he's fully healthy, he he's the option. I'm just, I'm nervous about him. After that injury, and maybe maybe all is fine. Maybe he comes back and he plays thirty minutes a game, and he's I just a little skeptical after such a bad injury. So I'm still going to say Valanciunas for the safe option. Maybe Levert if you need to um, take a flyer on someone. Like you just you're kind of like down your league, and you just need maybe someone to help pull you back up. So those are my two options. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? I would stand pat if I was him. You know, I do like the idea of picking up uh, Valanciunas or Levert, but I feel like you could still wait a few weeks to uh, make that move. And, you know, why not just, uh, you know, Josh Hart has been disappointing. So I do agree with your take on if you're going to drop a guy, it would most likely be Josh Hart here. But with LeBron still not back this week, I say just... Just ride Josh Hart for the rest of this week. Just stand pat. You know, I think all these guys you're looking to pick up, I think they're still going to be available next week. I think you can make a move on these guys. So, uh, you know, I, I would just stand pat for the week at least. That, but that's my take. I do like the idea, though, of uh, picking up a Valence Eunice or uh, picking up a Karis Levert, although he's probably the farthest away from a return. I also kind of like the thought of picking up Eric Gordon, man. With the loss of Clint Capella, this team needs, you know, Clint Capella was scoring the ball. He was um, like a second scoring option for them. They're going to need more scoring on this team. We know Eric Gordon can can score the ball. So uh, I don't think Eric Gordon is going to be out for much longer. So he he could be another guy to pick up as well. A lot of interesting, uh, a lot of interesting options for Hector. Yeah. Any closing and, and, thoughts on it? You know, I should, well, I should really read these properly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you think I would? He's in a keeper league, uh, so now I'm thinking Levert for sure. Whoa! You know what? I didn't even, <laughs> I did not even see that. I that know, this is a how keeper bad is league. that? Yeah. You know. Dude, uh, Neil, shame on us, man. Shame <laughs> on us. You know, I, I stopped reading when it said 12-team head-to-head. I was like, oh, what would I do in a 12-team head-to-head? You know what? I would definitely grab Karis LeVert. In fact, uh, I would uh, actually, and you know what? I maybe, if you're not winning this year, I might drop Alec Burks. Because uh, I, I think Josh Hart, two or three years from now, Neil, Josh Hart could be a start, a solid starting caliber point guard in this league. I don't know if I want to drop Josh Hart now that I know this is a guy you can keep forever. I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know how the keeper league works. And it is, uh, in my one league, you can keep one guy. So I don't know if he can keep everyone or he has like just a couple of spots you can keep. Um, but Levert is definitely that keeper option, even if it's uh, limited. And the number Man. of keepers. Um, yep, go ahead. Levert Le- Le- looked like a potential all star. I know he was having a heck of a season. Yeah. You would, you know what? You should definitely pick this guy up right now, even if you got to wait on him. This is <laughs> yeah. a guy that this is a guy that could be a game changer. So yeah, definitely uh, go ahead, drop Hart, drop Alibrooks. I would hang on to Kevin Horter. He looks like he could be a solid pro in this league. Reminds me a lot of like. Uh, Clay Thompson esque, so I would not drop him. Uh, I also kind of like Larry Nance's long term outlook, like career wise. But I don't know, man. A lot of interesting stuff. Neil, that whole keeper league factor just kind of <laughs> changed this whole question. No, did it? I got. I mean, uh, Twitter. I mean, you got to cut down from two forty characters, two eighty is too many characters to read. Um, yeah. Well, thanks for so much for that question. Um, if you have other ones or just any commentary, I, I'm. Happy to get any sort of tweets at me. I'm at Ball with Neil. Um, Adrian, you want to sign off? I'll let you do your handle. All right, man. I'm at Adrian Benjamins. Hit us up. Thank you guys so much. 
I'll be back. We will be back tomorrow. Neil will be back shortly for two more games. Thanks a lot. I'll see you guys later. All right, on to the last two games of the evening. Recently concluded, we have Sacramento against Portland. The Kings have a nice win here at home. Portland start off with their side. Jake Lamb is still starting. But let's start off with uh, Damian Lillard had the big night, uh, or big line of the night, 35 points, 3 rebounds, 5 assists, 11-27 shooting, 9-9 nine, nine from the free throw line, four three-pointers and a steal, six turnovers to go along with that. C.J. McCollum uh, still having some of these really disappointing games. Tonight, 30 minutes, six points, six rebounds, one assist on two of 14 shooting. My word, two of two from the free throw line, a steal, three turnovers. Nurkic coming back to earth, uh, 29 minutes tonight, six points, 11 rebounds, five assists, three of seven shooting. And a block, uh, Aminu double doubles with 13 points, 11 rebounds, three assists on three of eight shooting, six and nine from the free throw line. That's kind of uh, his Achilles heel there. A three pointer, two steals, no blocks. And then Jake Lehman, as mentioned, it's a start, plays 22 minutes tonight, 13, three and zero, six of nine shooting, one on one from the free throw line, no. Three pointers, no defensive stats. This evening, uh, off the bench, Evan Turner plays 27 minutes, 14, 2 and 4, and 5 of 11 shooting. 3 to 3 from the free throw line, a three pointer, and a steal. Zach Collins plays 22 minutes, 2 points uh, on 2 of 4 from the free throw line. No field, goal, field goals made tonight on 0 for 1 attempts. Four rebounds and zero assists, zero steals, two blocks. Seth Curry gets 21 minutes. Myers Leonard actually had a nice game here, uh, 19 minutes. Um, somewhat of a one-sided game, so he got at least a parts during it, I think. Uh, 19 minutes, 11.7 rebounds, two assists, four or five shooting, and a steal, three three-pointers. He has a really good stat set if he could ever be good enough to play a um, significant role for an NBA team. Uh, Nick Stauskas gets seven minutes. I guess the one guy we should really talk about here is Aminu. Um, I think everyone else is either owned or doesn't need to be thought about being picked up. Uh, Aminu currently 122 on the season, so he's right on the cusp there. Um, nine cat leagues, he's better. Uh, because his turnovers are so low, just 0.8 turnovers a game. Really, he's never really done it with points. He does it with um, does it okay with three pointers. Though this year at 1.3, it's not that not enough. With all the three point shooting out there, he does get 8.2 rebounds. The assists are not much. 1.1, 1. 1, uh, 1. 1.0 steals, 0. 0.4 blocks, uh, 42 percent. That is what worries me. Um, he is shooting 82% from the line this year, which is amazing for him. Um, just um, kind of blah. And I think uh, there's better guys out there, especially if you need like a sort of a guy who can rebound and perhaps get a block um, in good field goal percentage. It's I mean, it's tough to find a – usually if you're getting a guy who rebounds, you also want good field goal percentage. And you're hoping those two things go hand in hand and it does not – with Aminu, so kind of takes away in one category, so I tend to avoid him. I would not recommend him unless that can fit your stat set needs. Um, on to the Sacramento side. Uh, let's look at um, Darren Fox. 16 points, 2 rebounds, 9 assists on 3 of 11 shooting, 9 of 10 from the free throw line, 3-pointer, 2 steals. Buddy Heal plays 28 minutes, 19-7. No assist tonight. 7 of 10 from the field. Two three-pointers, 3-3 three three from the line. No defensive stats. Colley Stein, 12-8-3. 4-4 from the free throw line. Two steals. Um, I swear my app always freezes up. Um, it just blanks out the stats. It's so bizarre. Anyway, uh, Amon Shumpert, 6 points, 3 rebounds, 1 assist on 2 of 9 shooting. Two three pointers, steal and a block, a turnover. Uh, Bielitsa in 21 minutes, 
Minutes are now going down with uh, Bagley ramping up. Um, 21 minutes, four points, six rebounds, two assists. So not worth owning. Did have two blocks. Uh, off the bench, Bogdanovich, 18, 2, and 3. 8 of 10 tonight from the field. Two three pointers, steal and a block, five turnovers. Bagley fouls out in 24 minutes. Did double double with 13, 11, and 1. 6 of 12 from the field. Yikes, 1 of 5 from the free throw line. Very, he's usually not that bad. He is like a 65% free throw shooter, shooter though, on the season. Um, Harry Giles, someone I am big on for next season. We'll see how this uh, this roster composition changes for next year. They've got a lot of guys. I have to think they're going to maybe make some moves with some of them. Uh, we'll see if Giles gets moved to some other team or if he uh, merges as a starter here, perhaps somewhere else. Or um, I think he's going to be a role player at the very least on a starting team or starting for some team, I should say, at some point in his career. Um Maybe next year, or the year after tonight, 19 minutes, 12, four and two, six of seven shooting and a block. Uh, Josh, excuse me, Justin Jackson, 16 minutes. Yogi Ferrell, 16 minutes as well. Um, Bagley, I think. Is going to keep improving. I doubt you could buy low on him, even though he's 177 on a per game basis. Uh, Bogdanovich has now climbed in the top 100. He is 98th. I think he'll finish. I thought he was going to be a guy who was like in the 70s, I think. I don't know where I thought he'd be. Certainly much higher than this. He could get a little bit higher. Uh, he's only shooting 44% on the year. Taking uh, 13 attempts. The 13 attempts may not come up. Uh, the assists are at almost a 4, which seems about right. Defensive stats at point nine and point two. Do not think that can change drastically. Maybe comes up a tenth of a point on each of those categories. So I think it's pretty much stuck here. Um, 2.13 three-pointers, that seems pretty much right. Um, so I don't think he's going to really change over the year. I guess he's going to finish in the 90s. Um, Bielitsa has fallen now down to 94 and will continue to fall. In my opinion, Kali Stein hangs on at 119, but has that, uh, unlike Aminu, he gets nine rebounds and he shoots 52% from the field, which is, Solid for a big man, along with, um, I guess, marginal blocks of 0.7. All right. Um, Going to head on over to the last game. Really no pickup news from the Sacramento side. Uh, New Orleans goes on the road and wins in Los Angeles against the Clippers, 121-117, led by Anthony Davis, 46 points, 17 rebounds, 4 assists, 16 of 34 shooting, 12 of 12 from the free throw line, two three-pointers, three steals, and a block. Drew Holiday still playing phenomenal basketball, reality wise and fantasy wise. 39 minutes, 19 points, five rebounds, eight assists on, well, did struggle tonight shooting, eight of 24. And one of three from the line, two three pointers, four steals, two blocks, a turnover. Julius Randle starting still. Um, in the front court, 33 minutes, 27 points, six rebounds, five assists on 10 of 19 shooting, seven and nine from the free throw line. Steal, no blocks, three turnovers. Etwan Moore, 29 minutes, uh, three is all around, three points, three rebounds, three assists, a steal, a block, a three pointer. Very quiet night for him, just four attempts. Um, let's see, Alfred Payton back in. Producing 11 points, six rebounds, three assists on five of 10 shooting, a steal, excuse me, a, a three pointer, no steals, no blocks. Darius Miller, 29 minutes. Ah, oh God, just six, two, and one. Miritich, this was the one that was disappointing. I thought, um, I think it's the second game back now, um, if I'm correct. And uh, I thought he would ramp up a bit more, had some foul trouble early on, played just 17 minutes, did not score 0 of 3 from the field, two. Rebounds, two assists, um, nothing to speak of. Still 57th on a per-game basis in ACAT. If you can buy low on him, I would suggest that buying low. What I mean is um, uh, I would buy below the 57th ranked value. I think he's going to return. Um, at one point, it was looking really strong. I think now it's more like fourth-round value. 
um, 40s, 40 something. So maybe 50 if, if something's going on that we're not aware of. But I think he is going to get better. So maybe if there's a frustrated owner, maybe if there's another like one or two really bad games, um, the owner will become frustrated at that point. Perhaps you can scoop him up. But um, most owners are probably going to wait and see. That's really it here. Um, Alfred uh, Payton right on the cusp at 116. It's just it's his uh, percentages that um, scare me. I know he's 49% on, on the year so far this year, but that's an improvement from before. And the 70% shooting is a little bit up too. So that one, those could come down a little bit as he gets more shots and perhaps gets more confidence and takes worse shots. We'll see. On the Clipper side, we will start with Tobias Harris, 21 points, six rebounds, three assists on seven of 11 shooting, two of three from the free throw line, five three-pointers, one block, saw a night from him as usual. Uh, Gallinari, 25, four, and six. This guy just keeps motoring. Eight of 13 from the field, three of three from the free throw line, six three-pointers, two steals. He is cruising inside, I believe, the top 30 on a per-game basis, which is just phenomenal. 31st overall. Twice Harris, 27th. Um, other starters include Shai Gilgis-Alexander, who just struggling. Um, poor kid. 0-3 shooting, no points, no rebounds, two assists, and a block. Uh, two personal fouls, just 13 minutes tonight. I'm not seeing any news on injuries. Avery Bradley played 30 minutes, 9-2-5 and five on 3-9 of nine shooting, 3-3 three, three pointers. Marching Gortat, 14 minutes, 7-6-0 and zero on 3-5 of five shooting. They go 1-3 of three from the uh, free throw line and had a block. Montrez Harrell off the bench, led all scorers with 26 points, added 10 rebounds, 5 assists, 10-16 of 16 shooting, 6-9 of nine from the free throw line. No steals, no blocks. Lou Williams. 30 minutes, 18, 5, and 5 on 6 of 19 shooting. Um, to go 5 of 6 from the line, had a three-pointer and a steal. Patrick Beverly in 25 minutes, scored 11 points, had 7, excuse me, scored 3 points, had 11 rebounds, put up 7 assists, or assisted in 7 assists, 1 field goal, 1 three-pointer, 3 blocks. Always a guy who can get defensive stats, unfortunately, just not enough minutes, not enough usage to really be worthwhile this year. Has dropped down to 200th on a per-game basis. Shaggy Gilgis Alexander, 142nd, has probably been dropped in every league, or people are just really hoping it's going to change at some point. The Clippers are certainly gunning for a playoff spot and um, will not uh, just run him out there if he's not helping the team win. So I think, as much as I hate to admit it, he may not be worthwhile this year, um, we'll see about next year. Uh, I'd probably be drafting him in late rounds if he's still there. Um, and uh, that's about it. Um, so thank you for listening. That'll conclude uh, the Monday night's edition of the Box Score Breakdown. Hit me up on Twitter. I am at Ball with Neil. Um, questions, comments, criticisms. It's all good. And um, we'll talk to you tomorrow night. This has been a Hoop Bowl presentation.